Mr. Thompson here. We're looking at U.S. History Standard 11, examine connections between the rise of big business, the growth of labor unions, and technological innovations. In particular, we're looking at Part B of that standard, examine the significance of John D. Rockefeller and Andrew Carnegie in the rise of trusts and monopolies. The period after the Civil War was a time when businesses looked to maximize their profits by combining competing organizations into one single entity. These large consolidated companies were able to control prices, production, and sales, and were also able to establish a monopoly. There are several individuals from this time period who are known for the monopolies they created. Two major players were John D. Rockefeller of Standard Oil and Andrew Carnegie of Carnegie Steel. John D. Rockefeller was known for his economy, precision, and foresight in creating one of America's landmark corporations, Standard Oil. After obtaining a degree in business, Rockefeller started out as a bookkeeper and a clerk at a wholesale grain and produce business in Cleveland, Ohio in 1855. His diligence and hard work won him admiration. His idea of thrift gave him the capital to start his own wholesale grain business in the early 1860s. However, Rockefeller soon realized that the growth of agriculture in the upper Mississippi Valley would soon eclipse so take over Cleveland's role in the grain business and saw Cleveland's location as better suited as a clearinghouse or a distribution center uh, for raw materials. The newest commodity gaining popularity and usage was oil. In 1863, Rockefeller entered the oil refining business. Oil had been discovered in Pennsylvania in 1859. In order for the oil to be used, it had to be first refined into a distilled spirit, kerosene. Rockefeller began by developing a business that transported petroleum products. Rockefeller sought to cut his costs by creating his own barrel making factory. He also cut costs by buying forest land for the wood to make the barrels and horses and wagons to then transport the petroleum products to market. His practice is what is known today as vertical integration. This creates a business that consists of all elements of production starting from raw material to the sale of the finished product. As a result, profits can be maximized by cutting costs of production. Think about it, the less it costs you to make something, the more money you get in your pocket for then selling that item. In 1870, Rockefeller created Standard Oil. Rockefeller began to buy up inefficient refineries and closed those that were too expensive to renovate and improved those that showed promise. When railroads proved inefficient for his needs, he built a pipeline from the oil field to the refinery. By 1879, Rockefeller and Standard Oil controlled 90% of the oil refining capacity in the United States. In 1882, Rockefeller combined his many companies into the Standard Oil Trust. The trust enabled Standard Oil to monopolize all aspects of the oil industry from production to marketing. With a monopoly or trust, all competition in the market has been eliminated. No competition means a business owner can set any price they want for the goods they're selling. A monopoly or trust is good for business owners, but harmful to consumers who end up paying higher prices. 
Another successful big business owner of the late 19th century was Andrew Carnegie. As a boy, his family immigrated to the U.S. from Scotland. The family worked hard to barely scrape by as they settled Pennsylvania. Carnegie began working in a textile mill at age 13. He later began working in the railroad industry and progressed through the ranks to become superintendent of the Pennsylvania Railroad. With good investments, his wealth began to build. By the 1860s, Carnegie had moved to the ironworks industry. The Carnegie Steel Company used the latest technology of the Bessemer process to forge steel more efficiently. The increased production of steel and the use of vertical integration allowed Carnegie to amass the first billion dollar company. Carnegie's use of vertical integration was similar to Rockefeller's. He controlled the entire production process from resource to finished product, which included mining the raw materials, industrial production of steel, and transportation for both resources and finished products. So you see, he controlled the getting the raw material, making, producing that raw material into a product, and then transporting that product to the market. A feature that distinguishes Andrew Carnegie from other successful big business entrepreneurs is the level of philanthropy, so generosity, that Carnegie supported with his wealth. Others certainly gave large sums of money to charity, but it was Carnegie who made a mark with his investments in society. He was devoted to educational opportunities for the masses, not just the wealthy. To this end, Carnegie funded over 3,000 libraries across the U.S. In addition, he gave millions of dollars to finance higher education universities in the U.S. and Scotland. At the time of his death, Carnegie had given over $350 million to charitable causes. The value of his charitable donations today would be in the billions of dollars. The rise of both Rockefeller and Carnegie as wealthy, powerful entrepreneurs is attributed to their skillful and shrewd business dealings. They were able to successfully maximize their profits by cutting costs of production through the practice of vertical integration. They also limited their competition through forming monopolies. The monopolies they created in the oil and steel industries allowed them to control the prices of their goods, thus keeping those prices as high as possible. There was limited competition in the market to undercut, so to compete with the prices they were setting. The fortunes they amassed were often at the expense of the small business owners and the consumers. While society benefited from their charitable investments, many people were also hurt by their business methods. 